One of the advantages of cloud is scalability and elasticity. Though these two words are used very interchangeably in day-to-day -day language, but there is a technical difference between these two. And I'll try to highlight that difference first about scalability versus elasticity. And then we will see how AWS allows you to implement both of these components within your application or architecture which you build on cloud. Let me give a basic example so that you could relate to the further discussion which is coming up. If I talk about AWS expanding its global footprint, what I mean by this global footprint expansion, in 2000, 2011, 2006, 2011, AWS has started with four region. Then by 2016, seven region, 2018, 11 region, and then by 2018 to 2023, there are currently 20, 31 region which are operational. Now, this is a strategic move they are making. They are ensuring that what are the places, location, geographical areas where they have demand for cloud computing services and they kept on operating and opening up the regions there. This is one example. Similarly, if I talk about another aspect of global footprint of AWS, that is edge location. So in initial days, it was around 14 edge location in 2008. In 2018, 150 edge location. And now if you see in 2023, which is a very early part of 2020, there are 400 plus edge location. So this is a strategic investment which AWS is making to ensure they can deliver services near to customers and can give them the performance and availability which they need for their global scale application. That is scalability. Let me take another example here. FIFA World Cup which happened in Qatar in 2022 it used Amazon CloudFront for contained distribution. When these matches were live and people were watching, 19 plus channels have used CloudFront to deliver content to their customers. And this you could check into the link which I have here. I would be putting this link. What happened in this case? It scaled up to millions of concurrent viewers to support them, delivered more than 150 petabyte of streaming media content, peaking around 23 terabyte per second, across multiple places, right? So as you could see, as this is what is the data delivery and then 249 billion unique client IP address. This is how CloudFront helped in delivering FIFA World Cup broadcast. Now, if I look at that website or those infrastructure, is this currently at the same utilization? Answer is no. When the requirement was, it has expanded elastically. And then when the requirement was not there, it has shrinked itself. So that is what we mean by elasticity, where I am having an increase based on business demand and again shrink when I do not need that much of capacity. So this is just a formal, informal way of introducing you to scalability and elasticity. I'll talk more in the formal way and go through different aspect of it and how it is implemented. I would read some definition directly from the slide because these are just one liners. Scalability is the ability of system to grow or shrink in a graceful manner. That's what we are looking for. When we need that time, we would have enough capacity to keep on expanding. Also, it is basically a design of the architecture that is growth friendly, which has been designed in a way to understand future growth. Like if I talk about AWS infrastructure, whenever they want, they could, or whenever they have need, they would open up regions there. And in those regions, there would be availability zones. And if they need more capacity, maybe they would keep on adding more resources into availability zones. Or if the demand is like this, they may add up another AZ also within a region, which used to happen a lot. So initially, maybe some region when it's just launched like Canada and then Beijing, they only had two AZs, but then afterward for availability and to give better capacity, they have expanded to three AZs in that. So that will always keep on happening. So regions would be added, availability zones would be added, more capacity would be added. So this is a design of the global infrastructure they have kept in mind. Some examples in IT context could be how efficiently a system perform and user traffic is increased on multifold. 
How will a database respond to higher volume of queries? So same database, number of queries just exp queries expanded. How I respond to that, and how our operating system performs on different type of hardware. This is also scalable. So I can run an operating system maybe on 4 GB RAM and two CPU, and it can be run on a big machine of 128 CPU and 256 GB of RAM or something. So that is also a scalable way of expanding your infrastructure and services. A scalable system performs. With the same stability, even the load on it increases. So stability is very much important whenever we are designing scalability. If I had to put this thing into a graph, a graph would look like this. In this place, I am plotting scalability on y-axis, keeping demand, x-axis, keeping time. My demand is increasing. See this one? This is my demand increasing over a period of time, and we kept on adding capacity to handle that demand as it increases. So I hope this thing is clear that what is scalability. Once this is uh, clear, let's talk about elasticity now. Elasticity refers to dynamic increase or decrease of resources. This word plays very important aspect or very important consideration to be taken when we are talking about elasticity. That is a dynamic nature. When I talk about elastic system, it will automatically adapt to match resource with the demand. Demand increases. Maybe resources would be increased. Demand decreases, resources would be decreased, and this would mostly be happening into real time when CloudFront had millions of users. It delivered the content for FIFA World Cup when there was 10 users only. Then also the delivery of the content was happening. So that would automatically be a elastic way of managing the thing. Some example into IT context: adding more instances whenever a web application gets a lot of traffic. that is very common thing i may expand my front end and add more capacity in that we can handle peak traffic like a black friday sale which we have, let's say amazon is doing it and on amazon prime day there would be huge number of traffic coming to the aws website and they have to handle that particular traffic amazon web services will help them in achieving that then we could have scaling infrastructure Into for test development activities and tear it down once test dev work is complete. So this is my elasticity. Now, how these two relate to each other? Let me read it. Scalability gives you the ability to increase or decrease your resources. Elasticity lets you do those operation automatically according to the configured rules. And if I had to plot a graph of elasticity, it would be looking like this same y-axis demand x-axis time and this is how my graph would be taking a variation of top top requirement or maybe the reaching up to the max and coming to minimum, reaching to max again, coming to minimum again. That's what we mean by elasticity. So I hope this thing is clear and I have put together this information into a tabular format also so that you could have a better understanding on what is scalability and what is elasticity so what is it hopefully it is clear scalability is ability of a system to uphold the functionality stability is important in this case elasticity is dynamically managing the available resources or the size or the volume changes we want to still manage the resources in same basis what is the use case for that scalability is to meet static predictable increase in the workload right a lot of planning would be there when you are talking about scalability elasticity is to meet the dynamic sudden increase in the workload right now something happened do i have enough capacity to handle it that is what my elasticity is talking about and the second thing is clarifying this further scalability is a strategic operation AWS will decide what are the locations where the new region has to be launched, where the new edge location has to be created. Whereas elasticity would be tactical approach. Let's say they are doing a Prime Day or a new series is being launched in Amazon Prime, and it would require a lot of viewers checking into that series, and that's why they would need to have elastic infrastructure. When I talk about scalability, the focus is on design and architecture. So when somebody is building or designing an architecture, they would take into consideration that it is scalable. And elasticity is more of an operational thing, which will be acted upon on a day-to-day -day basis. 
Scalability's focus is to provision resources to exceed future demands. When my requirement would keep on increasing, my demand would keep on increasing, I would be ready to handle that in future. Whereas elasticity is to meet present demand, whatever is there, could be low, could be high, we would meet that present demand. When we talk about consideration for scalability and elasticity, consideration for scalability is medium and long term predictions, whereas elasticity focuses on short term demand of it. And when we focus on how it is executed, typically scalability would be scheduled. Like we would have announced, like AWS would have announced that they would open a new region in 2023. And the preparation for that has happened years before, maybe, maybe at least months before, and maybe on a specific time they would launch it. So that is a typically scheduled. And in case of elasticity, typically this is triggered by automation. So I hope this thing is clear and you have a better idea about scalability and elasticity. Now, one point I want to clarify here you cannot have elasticity without a scalable system right so be aware let me repeat you cannot have elasticity without a scalable system all right now question comes how i would implement it so let's talk about very generic information first and then we'll talk about aws specific information when i have to achieve scalability i would be applying a scale up down approach or it is also referred as vertical scaling this is one way of achieving scalability what we do in this process we replace the resource with a bigger or we add more capacity in the same resource. Let me give an example. So maybe I initially started with a small volume of storage. This is the outer boundaries representing my storage. And when I needed capacity, I could have added more volumes or more disk in that volume. So my volume keeps on increasing. So that is I'm scaling it up. Or maybe I had a database server and that database server was small initially with two CPU and two RAM and then two GB RAM. Then I increased to three CPU and three GB of RAM, maybe then four CPU and four GB of RAM. So what I'm doing here, I am vertically scaling the resource either by adding more capacity into the same resource or replacing it with a bigger configurational resource that is scale up down or vertical scaling. Another approach of achieving scalability is your scale out design or it is called scale out scale in or referred as horizontal scaling. What we do in this particular case, we add more resources to our architecture and spread the workload across those resources. Let's see an example here. So I have, let's say a laptop. I had the D drive in that. Now I got that filled up, filled up. Maybe I have added another drive, E drive on a server, another drive, F drive on a server. So this is a way of scaling out. I am adding more resources to spread the load. And that's how I am achieving a scale out design. On the other hand, a compute node can be scaled out too like this. So maybe I would call this dotted line, let's say as a cluster. And on that cluster, I would keep on adding nodes if I have to spread my workload across those resources. So that is another approach which you could have followed for scaling out or horizontal scaling. So this is a horizontal scaling which is happening here. Now, when to use which type of scaling? I would say that your scale up down or vertical scaling is suitable for state full workloads where the state is maintained within that resource like let's say you have a database server now this database server has one endpoint which you are talking to if you want a bigger server you would just replace this with a bigger server and that endpoint would still remain the same so when i have a stateful workload then probably scale up down or vertical scaling would be much efficient most of the time traditional databases are scaled like that and when i talk about scale out it would benefit when your workload is stateless when you are not keeping state information within the workload itself Right. So an example for this type of workload is, let's say I have to call my bank call center. Now, when I call my call center for the bank, I don't expect the same person to pick up my call. But what all of these agents have access to, they have access to a central database in which my information is stored. 
So this agent can read this state from a standard database, which is a central database, and they would be updated with my case, like who am I, why I'm calling, what are my cases open, what is my balance in account or other stuff, whatever I want to know about. So this time, state agent A responds to me or B responds to me, doesn't matter. I would always be getting the similar type of responses. That is a scale out design where you are adding more nodes or more agent in call center to handle the volume which is coming up. So I hope this thing is clear and you have a better understanding of scalability versus elasticity. We will discuss on more important aspect of how to implement these solutions in next lecture. Thank you.